imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent at night and you hear noises coming from outside. So you leave your tent, you come outside and you see hundreds and thousands of people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain When you're looking around the wilderness for a split second, your eyes fall onto the face of Imam Hussain You see the sadness and sorrow in his face. In that moment, you decide you're going to stay. So now the 10th of Muharram comes, the day of Ashura, and now you're the 73rd companion of Abba Abdullah Imagine you walk up to the Imam and you offer your service and he gives you a choice he, in, in how you want to serve him. So for example, you can go and get water with Abul Fadl al-Abbas salam. You could protect the tent of the women and children. You could go and fight against the armies, the enemies. What would you want to do on that day? To be honest, um, what I would want to do is, well, anything that's best. So if the best thing to do is to protect the women, I would do that. And like if um, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, he tells me, um, uh, like to go get him water, I'll do it straight away with no hesitation. Cause um, it's like, it's not just the, the way that he got hurt, it's the, how once you help people and you forgive people that, that like, it just, it, just, it, it makes your heart stop to, to see that this story like, that people sometimes don't even pay attention to. So to be honest, I'll just do whatever I can. If he wants me to fight, I would fight. If he wants me to protect the woman, I'll protect the woman. If he wants me to bring him more, I'll bring him more. No doubt about it. So now imagine one day you come home from school, you see your family running around the house one person's trying to bring fruit, another person's trying to make tea, another person's trying to cook food. And it looks like to you that you have guests or a guest has come to see your family. So you grab one of them and you say, what's going on? Who's come to see us? And they say, someone's come to our house, but they haven't come to see us. They've come to see you. So you say, okay, who is it? Maybe you think it's a friend from school or a friend from the mosque or a friend from the community. You ask where your guest is and they say the living room, you come up to the living room, you open the door, you walk inside and you see sitting on the chair is Imam Hussain. In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? Knowing he's come to your house to see you. When I, when I first step into the room and what if I see, like, when I see his face, no doubt about it, I'll straight away cry and I'll ask him to make the art for, for me and ask God to forgive all my sins because like no, not every, no one's per, um, perfect in the world so that will be my first my first like and then and then I'll ask him for keep to keep my family safe for nothing bad to happen to us no illness no nothing because um, without family, there's not really life. And I love my family to the bottom of my heart, so that's what I'll probably tell him. What would you want him to say to you? Like, that I, w I, would, like, I, I would like him like, to praise me and to motivate me. I want like, to tell me how, how he was so patient with the struggle that he had to put up with to help me like so it's like it's like him being an inspiration to me at the beginning i asked you about 1400 years ago i asked you that if you walk up to the imam and the imam gives you a choice and says to you you can pick whatever you like and you said no i would do whatever the imam said 
was best. Now a lot of us in this day and age often forget that we have an Imam who's here with us and in a way him being physically absent from us has given us a choice in the way we want to serve him. Because some say, you know, Imam Hussein had 72 companions with him on that day. Yes, his sacrifice was great, but he still had 72 loyal followers. How many companions does the Imam have today? So my final question is, what do you think your 12th Imam wants from you? Do you think he's happy with you? Do you think you've served his cause? You've put a smile on his face? You've done what's best by him? Well, um, like, as I've been told stories, I don't um, not, um, why, 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 like, when you ask when your kids, why are they, why are their face all bright, like, and light? It's because they don't do wrong and they don't hurt someone. It's like when, when you're thinking, oh, what does the Imam think of you? You, you know, in your heart, like, it's, it has to be something good, because no Imam, no Imam will think negative, negatively, to, towards a person. So, um, the twelfth Imam. What I think like he thinks of me is like because I've been told by other people as well. I have lots of potential, and I want to do good with my life. But there's some mistakes that I've done, and that I regret a lot. So, I know he would mention mention some of my mistakes, but also motivate me and inspire me and to help me become a better person. What do you think he wants from you the most? To be. Um, to be loyal and to um, like pray, pray to God and be religious and to keep on following your deen. Don't make stupid mistakes. Don't be influenced by friends. None of this um, like negativity around you. Don't don't let anger uh, don't let anger take over your happiness and the, your goodwill. That's what I would think he would say. And if you could say anything to the Imam of your time now, what would it be? It has to, the first, the first thing has to be thank you. I will have to thank him because knowing that there's someone, there's someone like, like so close to God, and me telling him things about me, and it's him saying that he'll help me, it has to be a thank you because it's, it's like I, I'm relieved now that. I've spoke to an Imam, and he also, and also God's watching. But now that I've spoke to someone that is from one of like one of the seven heavens, I just like I just like lots of things in my life will just calm down. That like, because in in a lot of situations I don't like telling people, not my mom, not my dad, not my brothers, not my sisters. I keep it to myself. And so it, getting, getting a chance to speak to your mom, I'll straight away express my feelings and it will have to be a thank you, first thing. And also I'll cry because it's like, like happy cries because it's just... You know someone's got your back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God.